Good evening and uh, welcome uh, to uh, the seventh monthly National Reparations Lecture sponsored uh, by the St. Lucia National Reparations Committee and our National Preparatory Committee comprising our allies at the UWI Open Campus at the Mon, the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College, uh, the Nobel Laureates Festival uh, Committee, the Pat, the Monsignor Patrick Anthony Folk Research Center, the Archaeological and Historical Society, the National Youth Council, the Ayanola Rastafari, uh, the Ayanola Council for Improvement of Rastafari, the Caribbean Rastafari Organization, and all of our volunteers at home and abroad, our technical teams abroad, our invited presenters, good evening. Um, as per unusual this evening, we would like to start uh, by inviting you to, if you can't stand at attention, at least pay attention to the St. Lucia National Anthem. Earl, you are muted. Please unmute. Earl, you are muted. Unmute. Yes, I'm sorry about that. And uh, welcome back to this evening's program. And of course, we have a packed program for you this evening, quite unusual. Um, tonight's program, we seek to wrap three March events into one and to mix that uh, with a number of other observances. As you will all know, March 8th was International Women's Day and the month of March uh, entirely celebrates International Women's Day. This coming Sunday, the 21st of March is going to be the International Day for Elimination of Racial Discrimination. And um, that is gonna be observed here, there and everywhere. And on Thursday next week, March the 25th will be the International Day for Remembrance of the Victims of Slavery as well as of the transatlantic slave trade. And this evening, what we're gonna do is to wrap all of those themes together with three separate sections. The first of which um, all of us are looking forward to, in which we will be paying tribute to 30 plus two St. Lucian women, we hope will be uh, the first 32 of 100 to be unveiled for the 50th anniversary of International Women's Day uh, in on the 8th of March, 2025. Um, we will be honoring them this evening, um, those who are with us, those who are deceased. And among those who are with us, we have some of them with us this evening who are going to uh, be sharing uh, the evening and their spotlight with us. Another part of this evening's section is going to be looking at the fact about how the whole issue of racial discrimination has never gone away. It has never disappeared. It is now masked and has to be unmasked. And we will be joined by none other than Darren Sammy tonight to give us a, 
a, a, a real picture of racial discrimination in world cricket. And we will have a, a contribution uh, by one of our respected lecturers on that issue. We are also joined uh, by St. Lucia's own Mr. Damien Greaves, who uh, is based in Grenada and um, will be with us this evening. Um, we have a, a, star, a star studded show uh, for you this evening. And um, instead of just uh, continuing to prepare you for what you will uh, be getting and what we have prepared for you, uh, let's uh, start off with having heard the St. Lucia national anthem, let's start up with what we in the NRC have adopted six years ago, seven years ago, eight years ago as St. Lucia's reparations anthem. We invite you to take a view at and listen to our own Herb Black with reparation. Then they came, the invaders, deceptors, plunderers, traitors, ripped you from one another, man from woman, woman from children, even babies were severed from their families, dragged into the dead of night, beaten, ambushed, brutalized, chained, and wrenched into dark, cold, musty, golden ends. Leaving behind their language, their souls, in the customs, values, beliefs, their gods, gods, their culture, sold into slavery. Reparation, reparation now. Reparation, reparation. Sometimes all I could do is only scratch my head when I get to thinking about slavery dread. All the struggles black man went through is well documented, it's true. Now the Europeans refuse to give to us black people what is due. Rasta always know this is a must, oh yes, cause it was prophesied by Marcus. Mm, how much will they compensate? When will blacks repatriate? How long must the black man wait to get reparation now? Tell me, no, I'm not a West Indian, true son of an African, enslaved by Europeans and want reparation now. Reparation, reparation. My heart goes out to the Haitians, the Negroes who fought for our liberation. They say Toussaint was a rebel, he was leading the black struggle. So for burning down of plantations, they had a tea accountable. So a tea was penalized in court, oh yes. 
trees still bankrupt. Mm, how much will they compensate? When will blacks repatriate? How long must the black man wait to get reparation now? Tell me, no, I'm not a West Indian. True son of an African. Enslaved by Europeans and wants reparation now. Right now. Reparation, reparation. Let's look at the beneficiaries of one of the world's most human atrocities. Was started by the Vatican, continued by the Europeans. It was one great triangle shipping slaves out of the motherland. Now they are wealthy because of us. Oh yes, all we gained was the sign of the cross. Mm, how much will they compensate? When will blacks repatriate? How long must the black man wait to get reparation now? Tell me, no, I'm not a West Indian, true son of an African, enslaved by Europeans and want reparation now. Reparation, reparation. Now listen. Now is the time I must emphasize. It's very important black people realize that it is united we stand as we forward on this mission. Our leaders must make sure we get proper representation. And for all the blood, the sweat and tears, oh yes, with one voice, let's demand our shares. Mm, how much will they compensate? When will blacks repatriate? How long must the black man wait to get reparation now? Tell me, no, I'm not a West Indian, true son of an African, enslaved by Europeans and want reparation now. Reparation, reparation. Thank you very much. Good night. Well, and we want to thank, we want to thank the gentleman who has consented and in fact, who black attended the initial lecture in 2017, um, which gave rise to much of what we are doing today. And um, we want to thank him again. Um, for allowing us to uh, adopt his song as our national reparations anthem. We take our first commercial, it's not commercial, we take our first promotional break and uh, when we come back, we continue with the seventh uh, monthly national reparations lecture. Stay tuned. And of course, um, you could learn from home. Uh, this is um, the Promotion University of the West Indies uh, open campus, um, learn from home, quality education online. You can apply now at UWI, um, the, the address on your screen, um, open.uwi.edu forward slash apply, uh, starting September, 2021. And remember the theme at UWI, open campus is we are open for learning so let's get back to uh, our program we have another advertisement here um, from uwi open campus and um, uh, this one can allow you to get your qualification in sport from home or work and you can choose from the three online programs a bsc um, in sport coaching a BSc in Sport Leadership and Management, and a BSc 
in sports kinetics. Again, learn more at www.open.uwi.edu forward slash programs. Apply now. UWI open for learning. So uh, we continue with um, today's, this evening's program. And folks, like I said, um, we have a very um, exciting program for you um, this evening. And um, we go into segment one in which we are looking at, like I said, the three themes in March. And the first we are looking at has to do no, with uh, International Women's Day. There's nothing like belatedly observing International Women's Day because International Women's Day is actually every day. But tonight we will be paying tributes to the St. Lucian Women of Honor in History and Education, Arts and Culture, and Preservation of Our Creole Heritage, Our Creole Language, and of course our African Heritage. And the we have identified um, two, and that is why we have said we are paying tribute tonight to 30 plus two. And um, the two main honorees tunight are the two Junes, uh, Dr. June Usuma and uh, Mrs. June King Frederick. And in that context, um, we will start with our tribute um, to Ambassador of uh, June Usuma. And of course, uh, we want to start off by pointing out that uh, she was um, awarded the um, highest national award awarded this year, and that is the award for the St. Lucia Cross. And uh, Dr. June Marie Christine Usuma. Um, this year topped the list of national honors um, for the 42nd anniversary of independence for a distinguished service in the field of education, diplomacy, regionalism, and development specialty. Her citation noted that uh, she is a decorated diplomat with a number of firsts under her belt, first uh, female to graduate with a doctorate in history from the Cave Hill campus. University of the West Indies, that was in 1994. The first female to serve as the chair of the Open Campus Council at UWI in 2018. The first female to serve as Secretary General of the Association of Caribbean States, where she served for four years from 2016 to 2020, during which time she revitalized the organization, which is the largest organization of Caribbean uh, countries, which is much larger than CARICOM, much larger than, larger than CARICOM and the OECS put together. Um, uh, Dr. Suma began her professional career as an educator at the Carmen Rennie Memorial School and later at the St. Mary's College during which time she worked through the St. Lucia Teachers Union to advance the professionalism and to improve the working environment for teachers. She obtained a bachelor's degree in sociology, history, and education at Uwikiville in 1987. And after completing her doctorate, she pursued academic programs in human resource management, organizational development, and strategic planning. Uh, she, she lectured at the University of the West Indies and briefly at the University of North Carolina. And she worked for 10 years from 1996 to 2006 at the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank in St. Kitts and Nevis in the human resources and research departments and the strategic policy unit as well. Uh, from 2018 to 2016, uh, Dr. Suma served as St. Lucia's ambassador to the OECS and CARICOM with responsibility for diaspora affairs. Since 2010, she has served on many national and regional committees, including as OECS commissioner for St. Lucia. She has received numerous regional awards, including UWI 
Alumni Pelican Award for Excellence in Diplomacy, Public Service, and the Promotion of Regionalism. For over 30 years of distinguished service in the field of education, diplomacy, regionalism, and development, Dr. Suma was awarded the St. Lucia Cross for uh, Independence during the Independence Investiture uh, Ceremony uh, for 2021. But tonight, we also honor her for her sterling contributions to the birth, the growth, and the preservation of the reparations movement in St. Lucia as a founding member of the NRC and one who has always been available to assist and to participate in every event we have invited her to. No matter what her schedule is, we've always been able to agree on a time that suits her and suits us all. In a recent interview in Trinidad, as the first woman to hold the position of Secretary General of the Association of Caribbean States, she said the following, and I quote, I always speak to the fact that I am the best woman to speak on behalf of CARICOM and on behalf of women in the region. I'm a black woman. I understand discrimination and I understand it from the perspective of being from a small country because make no mistake, small countries are discriminated against. So I'm a woman, a black woman from a small country. So I get all the forms of discrimination imaginable, end of quote. Let's applaud Honorable Dr. Ambassador June Suma, and we welcome her to take a bow and take the floor. Ambassador Suma. Thank you very much, Mr. Buski. Thank you for the commendations from the NRC. Let me say that I have been aware of discrimination from the time I was a child. My mother was of East Indian descent and I remember going out with her one day and my niece, and my niece is of a darker complexion than both my mother and I, my mother was pretty fair. And, uh, I was nine years old, or, or maybe even younger than nine years old, and somebody said to my mother about my niece, what a pretty black child. And my Indian mother um, erupted, saying, why did you have to say pretty black? Why didn't you say she was a pretty child? Aren't black people also pretty? And in my lectures on reparations, I point to the fact that black women have been the most discriminated against. During enslavement, I remember Professor Beckel saying to us that it was only an enslaved black woman who could produce a slave. All of her children were slaves, no matter who was the father of the child. And it all these things always stuck with me. So when I made that statement, it was at a meeting that ECLAC held um, regarding equality and inequality in the sustainable development goals. And um, the emphasis was on what was going to, what we wanted to see by 2030, but nobody was addressing what was happening now in, in the Caribbean and Latin America with regard to racism and with regard to discrimination. And I was the only person in the room which consisted of maybe 75% um, men of, of Caucasian descent and um, maybe another 15% of women of Caucasian descent and the rest of us were black. And, and we were talking about inequality and discrimination and nobody was addressing the elephant in the room. And so I felt that I had to do it. And I continue to feel that I must speak on behalf of women, on behalf of black women, on behalf of black women in, 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 in small developing states, because we are discriminated against on three levels. And um, I am putting that down in a, in a book right now um, entitled, well, the title might change, but right now what I have is my resistance um, 
identity, gender, and race in social mobility in the Caribbean. And, and I address all of these issues because throughout my life, as I said, I have felt that discrimination, whether I was called the coolie woman child or half Indian or the black girl with all the hair or nigger or the black woman from CARICOM. At every stage of my advancement, there has been discrimination and I would like to address it. And so I am very, Grateful that you think that my, uh, and the St. Lucia government felt that my life and my work um, should be rewarded. And I am very pleased to, to, um, to accept the honor from my country and to say that I will continue to do the work for the reparations um, committee, no matter where I am located. I know I just had five minutes, so I hope that that speaks to some of the issues that you raised in your presentation. Thank you so very much, Honorable Dr. Ambassador June Asuma. And of course, um, we want to remind our viewers and our participants and our presenters uh, that this program is being viewed beyond our shores. And um, certainly we do have um, many uh, regional followers. We have been followed in the, the diaspora as well. And therefore, we want to say hello um, to everybody out there uh, listening. We want to reach out to Ambassador David Comisong in um, Barbados, who has joined us. And um, we will be inviting him to um, share a few words with us a bit later. Also with us tonight is Mr. Winston Fulgens, a lecturer at Sir Arthur Lewis Community College. Like I said, um, former cabinet minister Damien Greaves will be joining us uh, from Barbada, from Grenada. He's also with us. Raisa Joseph, uh, our volunteer, is with us this evening. Monsignor uh, Patrick um, Anthony, uh, Dean Paulette Luisi and Krumer Lucien, uh, Madam June Frederick, who is uh, coming up next, um, Sigutani Bryan, and of course, uh, Ambassador Sumo, whom you've just heard from. This is just to give you a little spread on um, who we have. We were due for another promotional break now, but since we did um, two um, promotions, in that first break, we will continue um, into the tribute to uh, the second of our initial inductees tonight. And um, it is my pleasure to uh, share with you why we honor June King Frederick tonight, because we see her as an embodiment of a movement for investment in cultural heritage through children. You see, June is described by someone who knows her work well enough as a one woman crusade for our masquerade. And another says, well, when she stops promoting masquerade, I don't know what will happen to it. But Mrs. King Frederick had a long committed um, time. And in fact, she has long committed her time uh, to works to pass on the knowledge and understanding of arts and culture to St. Lucia's children. And she started the kiddiecrew.com group about a decade ago to promote the arts and local culture as an investment in our future. Uh, but June's passion has been about how St. Lucia's preserve our African cultural heritage through the masquerade every Christmas. Indeed, her latest related production, The Magic of the Masquerade, set in Grosely, puts the masquerade in historical perspective and traces its deep African roots in both national tongues of St. Lucia, mixing poetry and drama, drumming and costumes with the children as lead players. She is the St. Lucia delegate to UNESCO, at least for two years, on the intangible cultural heritage um, a former chair of the St. Lucia National Awards Committee, as well as an ex-director of the Monsignor Patrick Anthony Folk Research Center. Mrs. King Frederick's versatility in the history of Caribbean arts and culture allows her to make the necessary link between 
arts and culture and the reparations message. And during this month of remembrance of transatlantic slave trade, her video, which you will see this evening, mix that African link from the very beginning. She can also help us trace the link between our masquerade and the other like representations with African origins across the Caribbean from Paibanan right here to John Canoe in the Bahamas from Toes um, here to Jab Jab in Grenada. As we observe the contributions of St. Lucian women to spreading the messages that help improve our future understanding of who we are and from whence we came, June King Frederick is more than just worthy of mention because she actually invests her time and talent directly into the memory of the nation's children, banking on the nation being able to withdraw on that deposit with interest as they grow up tomorrow. Today, apart from uh, kiddicrew.com, June's major efforts are through the entity appropriately named Youth in Action, YIA, Youth in Action. Indeed, folks, it is for her contribution to the preservation and continuity of our African cultural heritage that we heartily acknowledge tonight the contributions of June King Frederick. But before we ask her to take the proverbial floor on your screen tonight, I'm glad that you will get a live and direct chance to see by and for yourself what we've been talking about in terms of June's portrayal of the magic of the masquerade. We've told you she has the magic of unmasking the masquerade, ladies and gentlemen, St. Lucians at home and abroad, Caribbean and African, European, American and Asian people tuned in this evening, one and all everywhere. Let's welcome Ms. June King Frederick's magic of the masquerade before we induct her in our first top 10 list of the NRC's 2021 virtual screen of fame of St. Lucia's Women in History and Heritage. Let's take a look at the magic of the masquerade. Shack shack, tabo skin vibrate, sound roll through back. Hands fly to air for breath. Give life to core and spirit moves. Flute fiddling it through wind, dancing, reaching out, body cry for freedom.
feet tread in fire like the burn of muscle whip, like the heat of dog trading runaways. Like all the ways they teeth me from mama and have me fear her wild and make me fear my kin as beasts. When poor to earth is beauty, the ancestors give us art, give us heart, original archetypal birth from oppression. We run in barefoot, don't want to look back. Yo, de, toi, ti mamai. Seeking wild freedom, evolution, new generation forgot. Spinning back flipsy acrobat fly, there are no snowflakes falling from this guy. New generation forgot. The ancestors live through the scorch of hell and make a heaven of this earth. Christmas time is by Jabla Majiati Mamai. Giving you true nativity in play, Pai Bananti, Jab, Sarafina, Uncle Sam. African heartbeats vibrating, drum and the trill. You forgetting our stories. Ground, blood red, swallowing sorrel, spill concoctions of St. Nicholas and white Jesus. All the saints you worship don't look like you, don't look like Mama Helen, have white face and who gave grace? To segregate we ancestry with naughty and nice and sugar and spice and snips and snails. Forget Santa. Let the ancestors teach me shuval wap, have a jab, take a dance with the devil of your fears. Glut must pass. Black cake must eat. Milk punch and pemmy bamboo bursts in the midnight shade. Soul pulls to my soul ties of my illusion. Are we okay? Okay. Um, are we ready to proceed? I take it that we are ready to proceed. Okay. Um, we want to, um, we hope that everybody got what was meant uh, out of uh, that uh, presentation. Um, Every time I look at it, it, it reminds me uh, that the relationship 
between the Côte Noir and the Fleur de Lis, which is located on our coat of arms. There's a lot we have to discover and rediscover about our history. And if the only thing anybody has learned tonight is the fact that our masquerade has an African tradition and that it is rooted in history and came out of slavery and how and why it came to be observed on Christmas Day. We have all of that to thank June King Frederick for this evening. And it is my pleasure to invite June um, to take the floor. It's all yours, June. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Earl. Um, it's, I am just so very honored to, I am just so very honored to, um, to, to, to take this award. And it's with a lot of humility. There are a lot of people I need to thank. And I, this award is a tribute to my parents, Winnie and Thelma King, the elders who are the keepers of our culture, to my youngsters of kidiku.com and my late co-producer, Finba Anios, the participants of Project Mass Camp, my youth in arts theater company and masqueraders and my precious family. I want to say a special thank you to Fiona Compton and Logo Lionel. They, they were the ones who, who did this video and it was, it's, it's just one of the most amazing things and gave me a lot more passion for, for my work. So as in true teacher style, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna to have to take you through, I'm gonna to have to take you through why I have such a passion for masquerade and I'm going to share something with you. Okay, so my passion, um, my passion for masquerade began as a child with all the magic and mystery associated with this exciting Christmas tradition. The magic of the music, flute, drum and shak shak who we happily danced with and followed through the streets. The brightly colored costume dancers with cone-shaped hats, um, the stilt walkers and the salmon Serafina, the pie banana character wearing dried banana leaves and the horse-shaped cheval bois. But we were also on the lookout for this mysterious, fearful character who did not dance to music, but, He moved to the rhythm of chants. And we knew we were always looking for him because he wanted little children to grab. Many a child ended up running away and hiding under beds in homes of people they did not know. Hearts were full of fear of this Papa Jab, a mischievous, fearsome red devil with white face and beard, whose nickname was Toes. His little black devils were tea jabs painted all in black and who looked for little children to take to Papa Jab and also to collect money thrown at them on the street. Also in this entourage, Mary Asset, the pregnant wife of Papa Jab, with her ample bosom and wearing her signature beautiful large hat. Acrobat, his second in command, dressed in yellow and black, like a court jester, and Kabuit, the black Jab with painted black face, dressed in burlap with black horns and a black stick. This excitement and joy continued into my adult life. But then somehow the tradition mysteriously disappeared from the streets of Castries, the traditional place of the street performances. You see, at the time, there were certain things that made Christmas for us. I'm sure you can identify. Apart from the fruitcake, sorrel, Christmas tree gifts, carols, and our Christmas lunch, they had to be masquerade. No masquerade then meant no real Christmas. As children, we only knew about the excitement of the spectacle and performance, nothing about the history. But then again, we knew little of our history at that time. 
from an early age, I was immersed in the traditions and culture of my country by my parents, who took me to participate in many of the early quadrilles and cultural activities and taught me about the wonderful people who practice the tradition of St. Lucia. Working with the St. Lucia National Trust and Folk Research Center added to my knowledge and love of our country and its culture. My parents also encouraged me to participate in dance, drama, and carnival, which continued through my adult life. My love for the Caribbean was also highly influenced by both my parents and later on through my travels within the Caribbean with my husband and family. My wonderful childhood, my knowledge of our history and culture built my passion for teaching and passing on that knowledge. My experience has also taught me as adults practice traditions in the present, in the now, they sometimes forget that the generations who come after need to be taught differently. We need to speak their language. We need to learn from them. It is not enough to ask of our generation, who remembers this? Who remembers that from our childhood? We must find ways to pass it on. Our generation's knowledge combined with the technological savvy of the present and future generations will work wonders for passing on our traditions and culture. Thanks to COVID-19, we are finally making use of that technology. Culture is now taught virtually. We need to let the youngsters help us document and teach future generations. That is what I intend to continue doing the, for the rest of my days. This is part of what is in store for you, another teaching tool. Enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, I would just like to say thank you. Thank you to all who have supported my work and I look forward to continuing for the rest of my days. Thank you so much. We have a lot of stuff coming out for you and we look forward to you sharing it with us. Thank you. And thank you so very much, um, uh, Mrs. June King Frederick. And I can assure you with that um, while you're investment is into the future uh, through direct investment in the minds of our children. Um, your work uh, that, um, that you have left, the books you have written, the productions you have made, um, they are going to continue beyond us and um, they will eventually achieve the objective that you set. So we take another promotional uh, break at uh, this point and um, let us look and see what comes up. Kevin is bringing up the classroom, bringing the classroom to wherever you are. And uh, this is the broad outline of all of the programs that are offered uh, by the um, UWI Open Campus. Now, you will not be able to read all of it um, right here, um, which is why we are saying that you need to go to the website and um, uwi.oc 
dot edu all the programs online the flyer is you can see it there also for undergraduate postgraduate and standalone courses and all the information like i said is available at you www.open.uwi.edu.powered/apply or on their website at www.open.uwi.edu and I can't stop reminding you UWI Open Campus their theme is we are open for learning so we move into uh, part three of segment one and um, we are within the time allocated for our program this evening and at this point we are going to look at the list of 30 persons and this is the segment that i am sure um, everybody is preparing for now as we indicated um, up front the we have honored to and we are now going to name the other 30 honorees. Among those 30 honorees, we have 16 who are alive and 14 who we will be honoring posthumously. Uh, but among them, we have some with us this evening um, who are going to make their presentations with us this evening. And what we will do is we will outline the first set of honorees, Sigutani and the UWI Open Campus team at Mont Fortune uh, in Castries, um, operating, of course, um, from home, will be assisting me as we go through the honor roll. So we are first, I'm first going to list the names and then we will, while we're going through that, the photographs we have will appear on your screen. Those we do not yet have, um, you will see the name. So let's get going. And after we have finished naming the honorees, we will go to hear from some of those whom we have named who are with us this evening and others who are not yet with us, but promised to join us. So here we go. Honorary number one, Dr. Margaret Braffitt, an educator. She was the first woman to be graced with the St. Lucia Cross. And she also served as a deputy governor general. Number two, two persons, Barbara and Patsy Cuddy, in the area of arts and culture, as pioneer women musicians in St. Lucia. Number three, Janet Karoon, who we have with us this evening and we will hear from, for her contribution to globalization of Caribbean history, arts, and culture. Number four, Mauricia Thomas Francis, who we also hope to hear from this evening, banker, parliamentarian, chair, of the National Awards Committee and a National Awardee. Number five, A.L. Don French, author extraordinaire and children's advocate. Number six, Mary Francis, pioneer women's rights, human rights and penal reform advocate. Number seven, Audrey Henry Lee, professor Audrey Henry Lee, educator and head of the Sir Arthur Lewis Institute for Social and Economic Studies at Mona in Jamaica. Number eight, and we are calling the names in alphabetical order in case you're wondering. At number eight, we have Jim Pullet Louisi, historian, educator, language and cultural expert, public servant extraordinary and best known as St. Lucia's longest serving governor general. Number nine, Lady Lean, Calypsonian, 
and women's advocate in culture and defense of women's rights. Number 10, Armel Matrin, educator, arts and culture, preservation of Creole and African cultural heritage. Number 11, Kenita Placid, pioneer advocate for diversity and equality, who we also hope to hear from this evening. Number 12, Catherine Seelys, outspoken women's rights advocate and defender of the underprivileged. Number 13, Dr. Veronica Simon, educator, member of the UWI COVID-19 task force and an original reparations stakeholder in St. Lucia as head of the UWI Open Campus at Mon Fortune. Number 14, Laverne Spencer, iconic sportswoman and a national role model and national awardee. Number 15, Margot Thomas, author, librarian, a national archivist who we expect to join us this evening as well. And number 16, last but not least, Justice Lorraine Williams, lawyer, magistrate, and judge, women's rights advocate, St. Lucia's first woman attorney general, and a prominent Caribbean jurist. Those are the 16 honorees alive with us, plus the two who we have honored, and that comprises the first 18 inductees. The first 14 posthumous honorees are the following. Those who have made their contributions, some of whom we remember, but many of whom we have forgotten because they've, gotten, they've gone to the great beyond. And we start again in alphabetical order. Joyce Ogis, number one, arts and culture in the field of arts and culture, music. And she was also a national awardee. We all remember Joyce. Number two, Grace Augustine, a legislator, businesswoman, and a first woman lawyer in St. Lucia. The thing about it is that she never got to practice as a lawyer, but that's another story we'll get from another time um, from somebody on our panel this evening. Uh, number three, Pat Charles, pioneer university educator. Those of us old enough will remember the UWI extramural department, which evolved into the university center and is now the uh, UWI open campus at the moon. And Pat was also a national awardee. Number four, Sixtus Charles, arts and culture, particularly the performing arts, carnival, theater, dance. And she was also a national awardee. Number five, Justice Susie Dove, jurist, the first solicitor general, and the chair of the Constitutional Reform Commission and another national awardee. Dim Sesen Descartes, arts and culture, preservation of Creole and our African cultural heritage. And of course, another much loved uh, national uh, awardee. And then we come to Petronella de Turville, number seven, arts and culture music, preservation of queer language and culture, another national awardee. Beryl Balbo Edwards, a legislator who was the first woman lawyer in St. Lucia to be called to the bar. That was the difference between Beryl Balbo Edwards and Grace Augustine. Um, Grace was the first lawyer, but Beryl Balbo Edwards was the first woman lawyer um, called to the bar. And that story we will share with you um, in their respective charts. Uh, number nine, Ione Erlinger Paul, 
pioneer St. Lucia women's rights advocate and a national awardee. Ione Ullinger Ford, her work led to the establishment of the St. Lucia Crisis Center. And we will be naming the person who, as the first celebrated victim of domestic violence in St. Lucia after the establishment of International Women's Day in 1975, Mary Ratcliffe. She was killed by her living partner in the presence of her children. That case has never been solved. Mary Ratcliffe made the ultimate sacrifice. And it is around the way in which she died is that the level of work was done with Mrs. Ione Ullinger Ford in the lead to establish the St. Lucia Crisis Center, which was once thought mistakenly to be only for women, but which is also serving men today in a time when there is also an International Men's Day. Number 10, Pat Isman, an educator, a scholar in whose name the UE Open Campus at the Mon is carrying out from time to time various activities. Number 11, Eliza Maxwell, better known as Liza from Goodlands for her contribution to arts and culture, preservation of queer languages and African cultural heritage. Papa will tell us about Eliza a little later, Monsignor Patrick Anthony. Um, the, at Christmas, the way in which she kept the traditions alive, the Sewenal, keeping those aspects of our African cultural heritage alive at Christmas is something that Eliza contributed greatly to and her son inherited from her and he is still alive. At number 12, Frances Michel, trade unionist, politician, and not many know she was also a diplomat, the person who established the St. Lucia embassy in Havana where she was undergoing a medical uh, treatment. Number 13, like I said, is Mary Ratcliffe, our first celebrated victim of domestic violence after International Women's Day in 1975. And at number 14, a name we all will remember and will know even if we don't remember, Haroldine Rock, the first woman cabinet minister, women's rights advocate, and national awardee. She was the first woman cabinet minister after 1967, March 1967, when St. Lucia gained um, associated statehood from Britain and Castries was transformed into a city and called a city even before um, the country became independent. But uh, these are the 32 names that we will honor this evening and uh, we will continue with our citations and I would like us to hand over to uh, Miss, Mrs. Sigutani Bryan who is going to deliver the citation for Miss Janet Carew, another of our inductees who is with us this evening. Over to you Sigutani. Thank you and good evening, everyone. Janet Carew is from Forest Day, but it's fair to say here that she's probably hardly known well enough here in her current position. A former cable and wireless employee who flowed to, to Cave Hill campus and UETV in Barbados, she today heads a regional team that puts the Caribbean on the global screen. Ms. Carew is Managing Director of UETV Global, 
the Caribbean's foremost television channel with a worldwide audience specializing in Caribbean history, education, arts and culture, and preservation of our unique Caribbean heritage in the 21st century. In 2020, UETV Global, under her leadership, was awarded the prestigious Vice Chancellor's Awards for Excellence in the category of international collaboration. Called the Globalization Award, it is a signal of the highest accomplishment achievable in the university community. The award recognized UETV Global's active engagement in international collaboration to advance knowledge globally, address significant regional and international development challenges, and achieve capacity development of the collaborating partners and stakeholders. And through this collaboration, to enhance international recognition of the UE and its global presence. Ms. Karu and UETV Global have also collaborated with the NRC to bring the reparations message to St. Lucia, the Caribbean, and the world. And indeed, our first Sir Arthur Lewis internal symposium last June was a record-breaking event that was also followed with UETV Global assisting in the broadcasting of our national and regional schools lectures with more cooperation on the cards for 2021 as we continue to share reparation, if, as we continue to share our reparations message with the Caribbean and the world. But Janet is also a Caribbean history maker in Barbados. In 2018, she was one of 14 claimants who filed a suit against the Barbados Electoral and Boundaries Commission demanding their legal rights as CARICOM citizens to vote in a CARICOM member state. The emergency hearing was convened before the Chief Justice of Barbados, Sir Marson Gibson, in the Supreme Court, resulting in, for the first time in Barbados's history, recognition of the right of CARICOM nationals to vote in Barbados as in any CARICOM member state. And Ms. Karu is also a member of the UE, of the UE COVID-19 Task Force. For her contributions through all the above, we honor Ms. Janet Karu and invite her to step from behind the desk and cameras and take some deserving limelight. Ms. Karu. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Chair, I would like to start off by speaking truth to power, and I wish to start off by quoting uh, Bishop Desmond Tutu. If you are neutral in a situation of injustice, you have chosen the side of the oppressor. Chair, Dame Paulette Louise, uh, Honorable Dr. June Suma, distinguished awardees, ladies and gentlemen, I'm humbled to have been selected by the St. Lucia National Reparations Committee and I wish to extend my heartfelt thank you to the selection committee. It has been an enlightening and empowering experience working not only with the St. Lucian's Reparation Commission, but the wider Caribbean and CARICOM Reparations Commission. UWI TV is the multimedia public information and education service of the University of the West Indies. Our primary objective is to present critical analysis of common concerns, issues, and socioeconomic priorities in our region and the wider Caribbean diaspora. UWI focuses on disseminating knowledge and information, and it has been my honor and privilege taking the Caribbean rich heritage and culture to the region and the world. Again, I thank the St. Lucia Reparations Committee for this prestigious award. Thank you, Chair. And thank you, um, Janet, for um, your, thank you for your kind thanks. <laughs> and um, we continue our program um, this evening. Um, we were to have been joined by Senator uh, Mauricio um, Thomas Francis and uh, Mrs. Margot um, Thomas, 
um, but I don't see them on the list here. And what we would like to do at this point is to ask uh, Monsignor Anthony, um, <coughs> sorry, if he can shed some light on uh, particularly those of our posthumous and um, those contributors alive, but um, those who we might only have known by virtue of liking their songs because their songs sounded likable at the time, but uh, the contribution of the likes of Liza Maxwell, Amel uh, Matrin, and others, um, uh, would you um, care to share with us, Monsignor um, Anthony, some views on this? Yeah, sure, certainly, Earl, thank you. Um, I would like to begin with um, Grace Augustine, because although she said she would never call to the, to the bar, but she was the first in Lucian lawyer. And coincidentally, it was at Grace Augustine's place in Monrepo that the young Sestin Descat, the queen of culture in St. Lucia was discovered through people like Harry Simmons and Daniel Crowley and the voice of Eric Branson and so on around there. And the, the voice of this, this woman singing and supported by Grace Augustine today has given us the noted um, Sessendesca, Dame Sessendesca, after whom Place Sessend is named and so forth. And I also like to link Sessendesca and Grace Augustine and Monrepo with another one, Amel Mathren. Amel Mathren was a principal at Monrepo at a time when Creole language was still considered a negative in terms of development of St. Lucian children. So Amel was a very courageous, bold, upfront kind of principal with a vision, forward vision that sing to people like Dame Paulette Breezy. So that when we formed the Moquel movement, here we had a school principal who was prepared against the, the tie of things to join that movement and promote the development of Creole in St. Lucia. And so we honor people like Amen Matre for her courage and her strength and her vision. The person of course, who for me is um, quite a pleasure to speak about tonight is um, Eliza Maxwell. We cannot think of the folk research center without thinking of Liza. I stay between my grandmother, who was the one who inspired me to start the folk research center, and Eliza Maxwell, who was our kind of adopted mother. Those are the persons who really promoted that, 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 that movement that eventually became study in action movement, the folk research center, and the work we are doing now. Eliza Maxwell was a tremendous community coordinator. She was the magistrate, the magistrate in the La Rose. But she was not just a figure in the La Rose. It also flowed out in terms of the community. Being a magistrate in the La Rose, Liza also was a community, today what we would call a mediator, conflict mediation. Liza was the kind of person that people came to for advice. But as Earl said, she was a bastion of our heritage. She knew all the solo, day, but seminar. And I mean, we learned. She was the, the first teacher to that small group that we started the focus then with. It was from Liza we learned. We went to, to um, Goodlands and in her, her whole Laros Hall there, that is where we learned our first lessons in quadrille, in court, in day, but, and so forth. And from there, we were able to move out to the wider community and do our research, the research that has led to the Focus at Center. So tonight, it's my pleasure to really honor Eliza Maxwell, one of the mothers of the Focus at Center. Thank you so, thank you so very much, um, uh, Monsignor Dr. Patrick A. B. Anthony um, uh, for your usual contribution um, to our, our discussion. We have um, one other um, awardee tonight who we have not yet uh, presented because she is also a presenter. And we thought it would be better to 
um, honor her when we will be introducing her um, to make her presentation. So we are going to take another short promotional break and as soon as we come back, we will catch up um, with where we left off. Okay, um, the, to, the display on your screen um, at the moment is the front cover of the book by uh, Morgan Dalfini. Am I looking at the right thing here? No, I'm not. Um, the, the, I'm sorry about that. Um, I'm not, I'm not seeing my, I'm not seeing the, I've, I've touched something wrong here. But nonetheless, um, we will um, continue as we go into um, the um, third section of uh, our our evening. And well, Mo Morgan's, Morgan's book is on. Hello? Morgan's book is on. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, Morgan, Morgan Dalfini's book. Um, this particular book here, folks, um, you will notice, um, looks at 300, a 300-year span of St. Lucia's history. Um, it looks at a very long period, and uh, Morgan, who is linguist, a historian, and, and has spent his life um, with equal passion um, looking at and tracing not only St. Lucian, but Caribbean roots um, with Africa, as well as following all of the sides of uh, what we learned as school as the Great Triangle and the Middle Passage, which we now know are the <laughs> was the mathematical formula formula that added up to the deaths of at least um, 12 million stolen people. Um, so that book, we would like St. Lucians at home and abroad, everywhere. You want to find out, um, you want to find out what is happening, then Morgan Dalfini is offering us some aspects of our history uh, that we will not have seen and known. And um, the book is available on Amazon. It's back on your screen. It's available um, at Amazon. We would now come back to our program and we want to introduce to you um, a video of St. Lucian children, it's short, just three minutes, um, doing what they do best when given the chance to perform. And uh, these are the sort of young people, the likes of June King Frederick produce through the Youth in Action, the ikidicrew.com, and uh, the other entities, the dance groups in particular, that attract uh, the young people. Take a good look at Helen Children, a Wolf Art Independence uh, production. <laughs>
Put a smile cause I'm just so happy Happy for the life that your light embodies Say there's no place like home we can catch a vibe over here in some valleys Kick a selfish with a fake or in a ship Down by the river where the kids close washing See there's no place like home The sun could set me free Your love is all I need Only one journey Our future is so bright Open your arms Hold me closely to your heart It's where I want to be Right here in unity Yes, and um, you sure you enjoyed uh, that. And um, this is where we're going to um, our next uh, segment. And what we are going to be doing here is we are going to remember the victims of slavery and the transatlantic slave trade. And here we are going to start off Remember, we started off with the national anthem and the regional, um, the, the, sorry, we started off with the, the national anthem and then with the continued with the national, adopted national reparations anthem. Right now, we are going to produce and present to you what we have again adopted as the Quill Reparations Anthem for the Caribbean. And folks, I want you to pay attention to this song because it is 40 years old. It goes all the way back to 1980. And those of us old enough to remember back then will remember how we listened to it, how we loved it, how we sang it. But I'm sure that tonight we will be listening to it with new ears because this particular song is one that we all know, but like Sir Arthur Lewis penned the blueprint, the manuscript for Caribbean reparations 81 years ago, which has only come to be adopted in 2020. This song 40 years ago was all about reparations when the word wasn't even in our dictionary every day. Take a listen to Gordon Henderson and Exile One singing Nutuavai Pu Aye for English speakers. We work for nothing. Now, folks, the song is a bit long, but listen to the entire thing. Let's go. Cool. 
Sit in your car up and then it'll be a shame I don't eat that dough Shoot it, no, you know what I say No, be a bad dough Bad guest, you know, the love of We can go No, I'm not TV, it's a pack of people No, they back here, I don't pay You can eat so late C'est un peu comme chez nous, mais c'est pas pareil. Yo gossé moi, yo exposé moi avec beaucoup de soin. Et comme ma chantier sur un fan moi. Et pas de travail, ou rien. Yo traité moi un plus mauvais que yo chien. Pas de travail, ou rien. Moi commandé pour que mon yo van. Now that we have listened to that song with new ears, you see why we have adopted it as a queer reparations anthem, which will be as popular in St. Lucia as it has been in Dominica, Martinique, Guadeloupe, Cayenne, and everywhere else that Creole is spoken, including those parts of Grenada and uh, Trinidad and Tobago. And we go into that section of the program now where um, the three of 
our presenters, our next three presenters, are Dean Pullet, Louise, uh, Mr. Damien uh, Greaves, and the, we will move into the third section uh, with um, one of our local, uh, local presenters. And we'll start off with Dean Pullet. As we said earlier, Dean Pullet is best known as St. Lucia's longest serving um, a governor general, um, but she has been much more than that and her contributions span, um, you know, far and wide. And in order to introduce her this evening, we're going to tell you why we honor her, because we also know that uh, following her presentation this evening on um, St. Lucian Women Pioneers in History and Education, um, you will, again, have been reminded of who she is. Uh, but uh, Governor General Emerita of St. Lucia, uh, Jim uh, Pullet Louisi, um, served in uh, that office for 20 years from September 1997 to December 2017. And prior to her appointment as Governor General, she had spent her entire professional career in the field of education. Uh, that career began as a graduate teacher at the St. Joseph's Convent Secondary School from where she proceeded to uh, hold administrative posts as principal of the St. Lucia A-Level College, then as Dean, Vice Principal, and finally Principal of the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College. Jim Pullett holds a bachelor's degree in English and French for, from the University of the West Indies, a master's degree in linguistics from l'Université Laval in Quebec, and a PhD in higher education from the University of Bristol. She has also been awarded the honorary degree of Doctor of Laws from the Universities of Bristol, Sheffield, and the University of the West Indies. Her postdoctoral academic interests cover the areas of tertiary education in small states, comparative and international education, and education for sustainable development. She complements that interest in education with work on culture and development and the promotion of French Creole language. For the past 20 years, she has been serving as the chairperson of the St. Lucia Nobel Laureate Festival Committee, which organizes the annual activities and events celebrating the lives and achievements of the island's two Nobel laureates, Sir Arthur Lewis and Sir Derek Walcott, and uh, showcasing the contribution of emerging national achievers in various spheres of endeavor under the theme, Celebrating Excellence. Jim Paulette has been the recipient of many awards, among them the Caribbean Luminary Award, the Woman of Distinction Global, Global Leadership Award. I'll repeat that, the Woman of Distinction Global Leadership Award. Award, the Honorary Distinguished Fellow of the University of the West Indies Award and the University of the West Indies Pelican Award. And our honor to Dean Pullet this evening is because she has always uh, been a stakeholder. Uh, she gave us a listening ear when she was Governor General listened to our representations to her as the representative of Her Majesty the Queen. And thereafter, we developed the sort of relationship with her that has seen her continue in her capacity today as chair of the Nobel Laureates Committee to represent the committee on our National Preparatory Committee and to contribute to the preparation, not only of our national lectures, but also equally important, our regional school lectures, which follow each other. And whenever you wanna mark it on the calendar, just remember uh, that the national lectures are on the third Thursday of every month 
and they're followed by the regional lectures on the fourth Thursday of every month. So tonight's activity will be followed by the next uh, school lecture next Thursday, the 25th, which is also the International Day uh, for observance of, uh, for mem remembrance of slavery, uh, the victims of slavery and the uh, transatlantic slave trade. So with that, we want to uh, give the floor to Dame Perlet, who, like I said, um, we can never stop applauding those who continue to be examples and exemplars. The floor is yours, Dame Perlet. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and uh, good evening to all. Uh, to be asked to speak on women pioneers in the field of education in St. Lucia is a daunting task in itself. To be asked to do so in under five minutes is well nigh impossible. But this is what the chair has asked for. And so to avoid being taken to task afterwards for not recognizing the hundreds or even thousands of women who have made education their lives work, I have narrowed my selection to just five remarkable women from among those in this inaugural honors list who have made a sterling contribution in the field of higher education at the national and regional level. I begin with the late Mrs. Patricia Charles, more familiarly known as Two St. Lucians as Pat Charles. Now, Admittedly, Pat was not born in St. Lucia, but she made this island her home when she arrived here with her husband, Bam. She became a true St. Lucian, so much so that she has been described as a dedicated daughter and committed servant who worked assiduously to improve opportunities for and the quality of education in the country. Pat joined the staff of the then extramural department of the UWI in 1963, beginning her career in the regional education system as the fourth resident tutor in St. Lucia. And she would remain at the helm of the university center here for 14 years until her retirement in 1977. The extramural department then was conceived as an incubator for furthering the education of adult learners, as well as for community, intellectual, social, and cultural development across the region. And how well the extramural department and later on the university center and now the open campus has served St. Lucia and St. Lucians. It was in her capacity as resident tutor that Pat established the Creative and Performing Arts Society and co-founded the Caribbean Regional Council for Adult Education. She will be remembered as well for her contribution towards the founding of the National Research and Development Foundation, the NRDF. But her legacy continues. Her commitment to education was not confined to the formal sector because in organizations like the Mouvement Creole St. Lucie, the Folk Ritual Center, the St. Lucia National Trust and the Cultural Development Foundation, that legacy, that Pat legacy can never be overstated. Pat's last official engagement as a member of the Open Com Campus Council was the induction ceremony of the principal of the Open Campus in October, 2009. Which brings me to the next honoree in the field of higher education. And that is Professor Emerita, Dr. Hazel Simmons McDonald. Dr. McDonald served as professor and administrator at UE Cave Hill for 23 years, from 1991 to 2014. 
as head of the linguistics department, deputy dean of outreach, deputy dean of planning, dean of the faculty of humanities and education, co-chair of the UWI cultural studies initiative and pro vice chancellor and principal of the UWI open campus. And now you know why I said earlier that Pat's official engagement as a member of the open campus was the induction ceremony of the principal of the open campus at St. Lucian, now Professor Emerita, Dr. Hazel Simmons McDonald. Dr. McDonald's research, since we're talking about culture, her research centered on language, bilingualism and literacy, particularly her work in Creole languages in education and on the writing of instructional texts for native speakers of Antillian Creole. Even in retirement now, she currently heads a team which has been engaged over the past few years on a project on Creole instruction from kindergarten to grade three in the education system here at home. The next educator that I have selected is the late Patricia Ismond, born in Miku, whose untimely death in 2006 at the age of 61 was a great loss to the regional higher education sector. Professor Ismond gave 30 years of her life to the University of the West Indies, rising to the position of head of the Department of English at the St. Augustine campus, during which time she helped establish the Center for Creative and Festival Arts. She was a Derek Walcott enthusiast and a lover of language and literature. In fact, her major work was a publication on Derek's work entitled Abandoning Dead Metaphors, the Caribbean Phase of Derek Walcott's poetry. In her honor, the Isman family has established the Patricia Isman Memorial Scholarship Fund, which is a revolving scholarship to be given in perpetuity to St. Lucian nationals, St. Lucian students wishing to pursue literature or literary studies at the UWI. Pat's vast collection of books and papers is now housed at the library of the Open Campus, St. Lucia. And the Patricia Isman Literary Workshop has become a signature event of our annual Nobel Laureate Festival. I now turn my attention to a former student of mine of whom I am justly proud. She is Professor Aldry Henry Lee, a professor of social policy and director of the Sir Arthur Lewis Institute of Social and Economic Research at the University of the West Indies, Mona. She is a sociologist who has researched and published extensively on social policy issues in small island developing states, focusing her research on poverty, child well-being, health and crime in small states of the Caribbean. She's a recipient of the Vice Chancellor's Award for Excellence and Research and Chair of the Annual Caribbean Child Research Conference. And finally, because I only have five minutes, to my last honoree, so much has been said of her earlier that I will be you know, very brief. We congratulate Her Excellency, Ambassador Honorable Dr. June Suma, SLC, on her two recent achievements. And that is the award of the St. Lucia Cross and the, her appointment as chairman of the Open Campus Council. For over 30 years of academic and professional service, functioning at the managerial, operational and technical levels in the field of education and governance. And in this month of March, dedicated to women all over the world, we express our gratitude 
for her unwavering advocacy for the advancement of women. In her own words, and I quote, there must be recognition that girls do not benefit from equitable access to education, which translates to decreased opportunities, inferior jobs, and remuneration, unquote. Now, having said that, and when you had a 30 plus two women who have been honored today, we have to admit that not all of us fall in that category of you know, um, decreased opportunities, inferior jobs, and, and um, re inferior remuneration. But, and we have been able to excel and do well, but let us not forget those who have had not the opportunities that we have. And their honorable Dr. June Summer is one who will never forget women of the Caribbean. Over to you, Chair. Thank you so very much, uh, Jim Pullett. And um, we would also recall uh, that um, uh, Dr. Summer is also the a very committed uh, West Indies cricketer but we will come to that um, in another uh, period of time. We now move to the other uh, section. We have to catch up with the time. Um, I do have one comment um, from online comment that I will share with you after our uh, next speaker. And um, we immediately uh, introduce to you uh, uh, Mr. Damien Greaves, a former member of parliament and member of cabinet in St. Lucia, a uh, Calypsonian um, cultural activist, um, Monsieur Tutmagai. Um, he is now uh, or has been for quite some time associated with the St. George's University School of Medicine. Um, but apart from all of that, apart from him being a St. Lucian and all of that, uh, Mr. Greaves is also, I have the honor of announcing that he has been selected among others by the government of Grenada to be a member of the preparatory committee for the establishment of a Grenada National Reparations Committee. And um, it is with that sense of pride uh, that our work here continues to replicate across the Caribbean uh, that I invite uh, Mr. Damien Greaves to speak to us on St. Lucian women pioneers in culture and African traditions and why women too have a stake in knowing our history and fighting for reparations. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Pre Mr. Mr. Moderator. Thank you very much, Mr. Host. Thank you to all of you who are there. I know there are about 15 of us on set, but I know there are a lot of people listening all over the globe, including the diaspora. Merci tout le monde. Bonsoir tout le monde. Mon espoir qui tout le monde tout le monde bien même si Covid la laje laje et qui tout partout. So nous allons parler about ces 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 madame là, ces femmes là qui really fait une bonne contribution à ça fait qu'il tient. As I fell histoire, as I as I fell, tout ce as I fell nous te hakapali. So I I will not give you these lengthy the, the lengthy citations because there are so many people to talk about. Neither will I spend time on on those who have already been honored. But I want to mention some special people that I think we need to take into account as part of the whole business of the pioneers in culture and African traditions. I want to mention. For example, Virginia Alexander, who had her dance troupe and who was a prominent feature during carnival, during independence celebrations and other celebrations like that. And, and remember, she also worked in the Ministry of Culture and she made an indelible contribution on our cultural landscape. I cannot move ahead without speaking about people like Christine, Christine Samuel as well. And we all know her contribution also in the field of dance. What about Martyriza Hall? Again, the traditional dances and the, the whole business of our national wear. Uh, Teresa Hall cannot be, cannot be left out in all of this and so on. 
and there's Ramani's Nesta, Mishak's mother, Ramani's Nesma, Nesta from Swazel, who was a phenomenal drummer and who has her own musical band. And I understood that that musical band is actually still on and, and still creating music and pleasure for people. What about Black Pearl, her black sister, who was not who is not only a Calypsonian, but who has been involved in a lot of the Creole movement and who has been involved in acting and so on. What about Minel Delis, who has exploded on the Calypso scene and who has made an indelible contribution to our culture as well? We have Jeanette Etienne, that lady, that wonderful lady who has been an, an inspirational person in terms of the Kutumba, which is so important. And we have other people come in um, who have invo been involved in theater and writing like Drinia Frederick. Um, what about Jane King Hippolyte, that lighthouse theater, her poems and so on, and her, and her activism in culture and so on. Marilyn Gastor, Brenda Kalix, all of these people, Flora Granger, all of these women made an indelible contribution. Lorna Lubra, even in, in, in terms of of, of the Calypso and, and administration of culture and Calypso. Miss Booty, phenomenal lady in terms, of, uh, in, in terms of what she contributed to carnival and the carnival costumes and those carnival bands. Ma Bebe, Mabel, a, a lady called Mabel, who is a, a Lawas icon from Denry. Delia Fosswa as well, who, who, who made a contribution as well, making sure she has those exhibitions and keeping things alive. So when we look at all of these women, it is a good segue into why women do have a stake in knowing our history and fighting for, for reparations. We cannot ignore the fact that women have been prominent in history's pages. 30% of the, of 30, of the 15 million people transported between the 15th and 19th centuries from Africa, 30% of them were women. And that's significant. And our women made a very important contribution, not only from the point of view of the rebellions that they participated in and the maonage, as we say, but they were also the bearers of culture. And the bearers of culture, as you see now, with people like Dame Paulette Louise and, 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 and June King Frederick and all of these other people here, we are talking about they continue to be bearers of culture, which was part of the resilience and the resistance on the plantation, teaching about Africa, teaching about life, teaching about freedom, teaching about the survival of our race. And of course, they established what we can refer to as the slaves biological and cultural footprint across the Caribbean landscape. We need to applaud them. We need to understand that apart from the fact that they, that, they, that, they, that they had these responses, they faced the brutality of enslavement, the floggings, the hangings, the exploitation, the sexploitation. One thing we must never forget, that black women faced triple discrimination on the basis of being black, one, a slave, two, and a woman free. Let us applaud our women who made that contribution on our landscape and our African heritage. Let us applaud them. I say hep, 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 hooray to all of the women of color, all of our black women in St. Lucia and across the world, across the Caribbean specifically, who have kept us alive, who have kept our footprints walking through the sands of time. Hep, 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 hooray! Thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, Mr. Damien Greaves. And we um, continue. Let me share with you um, quickly um, three comments um, from uh, Facebook. Uh, Facebook comments. One is uh, from um, Sylvanus Bourne, um, who says, and I quote, I applaud the efforts and courageous hearts of those seeking reparations for the people of our region and kudos for those leading or have contributed to the advancement of women and women's rights. A second message from Rosemary George. It says, thank you to King Frederick for keeping the cultural childhood memories and traditions alive. 
And a third is from Cecilia Lacobinier, and she says kudos to Dr. Sumer and Mrs. King Frederick. So we continue uh, with our program this evening, and let's move on quickly to the next segment, which is dedicated to the whole issue of observing this coming Sunday, the March 21st, the International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination. And uh, we start off with two video clips, a very short one of Darren Sami in Pakistan, uh, that is only 30 minutes long, and one of five minutes with Darren Sami himself telling us about racial discrimination in Pakistan cricket. And then we would invite uh, Mr. Winston Fulgens, lecturer uh, from the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College, who is also uh, the chair of the Archaeological and Historical Society, who will give us a presentation on why racial discrimination is no game and must be unmasked. Let's start with this following clip of Darren Sami in Pakistan. Folks, have a look at Darren Sami in Pakistan. That's all I'm saying. Have a look. Now, that was Darren Sami in Pakistan, where he is Mr. Cricket. He's held all the top positions. Um, he's been made an honorary citizen of Pakistan to hold the position that he holds now. Now, let us join Darren Sami, who is going to give us um, five minutes of an experience, a terrible experience that he went through that we should treat as an example of how uh, racial discrimination continues to exist even among people of color. Take a look at the following. Hey, what's up? I want to address something quickly. Um, Look, I've played all over the world and, um, you know, I've been loved by many people um, and um, I've embraced all the dressing rooms that I've played in. But I want to quickly say this. I was listening to Hassan um, Minaj um, talking about how uh, some of his people in his culture view or describe black people now that doesn't apply to everybody but i say this because of something i experienced so i said i was angry after listening to to him describing a word that they use to describe uh, black people which he was saying is not in a good way you know um and it was degrading so Instantly, I remember when I played for Sunrisers Hyderabad in 2013 and 2014, I was being called the exact same word that he described that was degrading to us black people. So I, want, I instantly got very angry about it, knowing now what that word meant. I will be messaging those people. You guys know who you are. And I must admit, at the time in which I was being called that, I actually did not know what it meant. I thought it meant 
strong stallion or whatever it is and i saw no problems with it because i was ignorant to the fact that i did not know what it meant i assumed it meant something else that was uplifting but every time i was called it it was me and, and to sarah Pereira, there was always laughter in the in the moment so me being a team man i thought hey teammates are happy it must be something funny but you could understand my frustration and my anger when it was pointed out to me that it wasn't funny at all it was degrading so i'm gonna be texting you guys and asking you guys when you all repeatedly called me that word over and over again to the point that i was even saying that's my name did you all mean it in any way shape or form as a degrading word to me because that's very important because like i said i've had great mem memories in all the dressing rooms that i've been in as a t20 player as a leader in a dressing room, as a captain, I've always been one to build up the relationship or build up a team, not bring it down. So all those who used to call me that, you guys know yourself. You know, you have, some of you all have my numbers, you all got me on Instagram, on Twitter or wherever. Reach out to me. Let's have a conversation. Because if it was in any way, shape, or form what uh, Minaj said it meant, I'm very disappointed. And I'll be still I'll still be angry and deserve an apology from you guys. Because I saw all of you guys as my brothers. So talk to me. Reach out to me. Please clear the air. And to all the other boards right like i mentioned earlier this is why it's important to take a stand against all the racial injustice against any human being that is not accepted but for now the movement around the world black people Everybody standing up against racism. That should be the message. Waiting to hear from you guys. Earl, did we lose you? It looks as if we lost Earl. Okay, he's back. Yes, I'm back. Um, the challenges um, still continue to haunt me. I've found myself back. Um, I just saw something in the chat room, a message that um, uh, Christine Samuel will soon be producing a book about Virginia Alexander. And that was a message in one of um, the chat rooms. And um, without further ado, in keeping with time, we invite uh, Mr. Winston Fulgens 
uh, a lecture at Sir Arthur Lewis Community College um, to uh, join us and um, he will uh, speak to us on why racial discrimination is no game and must be always unmasked. Mr. Fulgens. Hi, good evening. Um, I've watched this clip several times and watching it again, um, it's always amazing. Uh, clearly, what it tells us is that even when we believe that we have achieved, it makes absolutely no difference. Um, racial discrimination, racism um, is never something that is just physical. Its impact is psychological. And that is one of the reasons why it has to be unmasked. Very often, People experience it and not even realize that it's experience. And you listen to a star, a superstar, professional international athlete, and you could see the impact it's having on him. Never mind the average person who has to suffer that type of discrimination, not even realizing that is going on. The worst part of it is when you don't realize it at the time, and later on it dawns on you that this is taking place and you don't even realize it. Racial discrimination started a long time ago. It was mastered and perfected in the Caribbean during the time of slavery. It impacted every single person in the society, the enslavers and the enslaved. It was used to control the enslaved to ensure that they were the um, producers of wealth and creational creators of value on the plantation. It was used in the post-slavery period to ensure that people stayed in their place and did what they were supposed to do. Uh, the body, the black body was used um, or minimized in such a way that it was in short, um, society ensured that these people stayed where they're supposed to, which was labor on the plantation. And as we go throughout the history of the Caribbean up to the 20th century, it is still that way today. Um, very often we compare ourselves with the, uh, the USA, in North America, talking about how, um, well, we don't have the type of thing here. We don't have racism in the Caribbean. And the truth is, we have racism in the Caribbean, but it's been couched differently because in the Caribbean, we're not supposed to talk about race. We're supposed to be a boy, a, a, a melting pot, a melting pot where everybody's one, everybody's mixed. The several Caribbean islands have um, mottos that su suggest that out of many um, people who have brought been brought to a specific place, there's one nation and so on and so forth. But the people of Africa and this and always know that things aren't exactly as, as rosy as they seem to be right? because of racial discrimination. So um, how we see racial discrimination, someone, a superstar athlete, a national hero in Russia, experiencing racism, not even realizing it, and it hits him a few years later, and now he has to, pro he has to process it. Apply that to the average person who has been kept in a specific place, in a specific space, because his body is what is being used, his hair, his skin color, the way he moves, the way he, see, he speaks, is used to keep him in a specific place. It has serious implications psychologically. And now many researchers are starting to argue it's ha it has um, impacts psych um, psychologically on people in our society. So it has to be unmasked, especially in a situation where um, people have to be made conscious of what is happening to them. Racial discrimination is real and it impacts on all of us so, um, psychologically and health wise. Thank you. Uh, and thank you, uh, Mr. Um, Fulgens. And of course, um, as Mr. Fulgens has um, uh, appropriately pointed out that you know, um, racial discrimination never ended. It has lived on and on. It is simply uh, more disguised now than ever. Um, and, and, and that is the, the problem that we face. We move on um, with the program uh, for this evening. And of course, um, we will um, answer the questions as they come in. And we will also uh, inform you of um, any questions that come in. Um, we invite uh, viewers to send your questions in. Let me uh, go to the, uh, to the uh, Google question sheet. And yes, we 
um, are open to questions. And uh, while we do that, um, we start to sum up the, um, the evening. And um, we want to thank everybody for having uh, been with us this evening. We do know we went a little bit over time. Um, we would have wanted to uh, give you um, every thing that we had uh, planned, but nonetheless, we want to inform you that this coming Thursday, March 25th, we will have the Regional Schools Reparations and History Lecture from 10 a.m. to midday Eastern Caribbean time, which coincides with the International Day for Remembrance of the Victims of Slavery and the Transatlantic Slavery. And next month uh, for our April National Reparations Lecture on the third Thursday of every month as usual, this time very early in the middle of month of the month that is April 15th. So um, we now introduce uh, Ms. Raisa Joseph, who is going to present uh, the uh, vote of thanks uh, before we close up this evening. Over to you, Raisa. Thank you, Mr. Bousquet, Merci Appeal. Aussi, many responsibilités à pour oui merci ces membres et ces gars là qui fait discussion ça là sur les parasites possibles. I have the responsibility of thanking the many organizations and individuals who made this discussion on reparations possible. And without further ado, we wish to extend our gratitude at the National Reparations Committee to Her Excellency Dame Paulette Louise, Monsignor Patrick Anthony, Ms. Dawn French, Mr. Damien Greaves. Mr. Winston Fulgens and the NRC Chair, Mr. Ilbuski. We also wish to extend our gratitude to stakeholders and partners, namely the UE Open Campus St. Lucia, the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College, the Nobel Laureate Festival Committee, the Monsignor Patrick Anthony Folk Research Center, the Archaeological and Historical Society, the Ayanola Council for Improvement of Rastafari, and the Caribbean Organization for Rastafari. Also, very crucial to our presentation this evening and our ability to bring this broadcast to viewers throughout the region. We wish to thank the UE Open Campus technical teams in St. Lucia and Jamaica, the UE TV global team in Barbados, marketing and outreach officer of the UE Open Campus, Mr. Sibuthani Bryan and IT technician Kevin George, Mr. Cleveland Sam, Mr. Cherise Glasgow, Mr. David Foster and the rest of the UE Open Campus team. We also wish to extend gratitude to Managing Director at the UETV, Director Janet Carew, and Communications Officer, Mr. CJ Bonadi. We also wish to extend our gratitude to UETV Global in Barbados, Ambassador to CARICOM, David Comesong, also in Barbados, and to the Voice of St. Lucia, St. Lucia Times Online, and Caribbean News Global. It would be remiss of me not to again congratulate our two honorees, in particular the two Junes, Ambassador Dr. June Suma and Mrs. June King Frederick, and to also thank all of you listeners and viewers at home who made this evening possible. We are very happy and grateful to have been able to honor all these wonderful individuals this evening, and we encourage your continued participation as we continue to bring you meaningful discussions that impact our daily lives, linked to reparations, issues of justice, and the development of our region. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you, Raisa. Um, I got a corrected message in the chat that the Christine Samuels book is dedicated to Virgie Alexander. And uh, we would have closed this evening's um, program with the African National Anthem um, performed by Miriam Makiba and Paul Simon in a video that we have is over six minutes long. But given the time constraints, we are instead um, going to end with one by the Masaka Boys. Uh, in such African group of children, world famous, and um, they have been um, highlighted on a local show here before. I'm sure uh, that the boys and girls you're going to see um, will be performing 
in places that could have been anywhere in St. Lucia, the Caribbean, or any other part of the world where people like us reside. On behalf of all of us, I'd like to thank all of you um, for being part of our uh, session tonight and uh, have a good evening with the Massacre Boys. Viva Africa. Africa. Yeah. Mama Africa. Yeah. 